Here's a dry eyed patient at our clinic, but what else is going on in this patient's eyes? So in retroillumination, please never skip this step. You can see a translumination defect and behind that translumination defect in the same shape is the haptic of the intraocular lens. And that lens is actually rubbing on the back of the iris and starting to liberate that pigment from the iris itself. Now this is the view undilated. The patient was also seen dilated and one obvious problem is looking at the PCO of the capsule. We see some opacification of that capsule, but we have to start to understand is it prudent to go straight for a YAG or maybe this patient just needs a lens exchange. And a few things to note here is one that PCO is asymmetrical. If the haptic is out of the bag, the PCO will tend to start in that same location and be more prominent than half than on the other side. The posterior edge of the IOL usually interferes with PCO formation. So if they're an asymmetric, please be suspicious of a the lens not being perfectly inside the bag. And then two, if you look at this translumination defect, it is much less obviously centered over the haptic because in a normal state, the iris is smaller and the iris defect will be more central and mm. then match better with the haptic. And one thing I liked with this slit lamp was actually having the patient look down or look down to the side. And that way with a dilated pupil, you can actually see the edge of the lens and its position in relation to the actual capsule oh, itself. Correct. So right here is the edge of the capsule. And we'll go back a little bit here for a moment. Let's pause in this particular section. Here is the edge. And even though it's not visible in this particular view, as far as I remember, this was behind the lens optic. And the only way to really judge is to make sure you have a good slit section or a nice section that you go through. And then the lens is very thin. So it's sometimes difficult to judge where the lens relates to the capsular bag but the capsular bag should be in front of the lens, then the lens, and then there should be the posterior capsular bag. And not to go too far back in the video, but I think it's instructive to also look at the cornea at some of that pigment that looks like it's been liberated on the back surface of the actual corneal uh, endothelium right there. So that's another clue that something is wrong with this patient, more than just the PCO, which this patient was referred for a YAG, but that would be a little too quick to go straight to a YAG in this case. And the I remember telling the students like you have multiple cues. So cue number one is like you have early asymmetric PCO. Then you look into translimination. Cue number two, there's a translimination defect in the form of a haptic. And number three, you have a pigment dispersion on the back of the cornea, as you pointed out. And all three together should make you highly suspicious of a capsular of something rubbing against the posterior iris, potentially causing UG. This is not the full UG, the uveitis glaucoma hyphema, but can lead, it's in the same system complex. Yeah, I don't remember seeing any actual hyphema or uveitis in this particular case, but we're in that same spectrum there. Yep, another good view. Patient looking down into the side just a little bit, seeing the edge of that lens. Now, one way to visualize behind the iris is if we go ahead to the actual UBM. And this is the performance of the UBM to actually visualize that space and where that lens is actually positioned. And a little scleral shell is placed on the eye. This sits directly around the cornea. This is then filled with saline just to serve as a buffer between the ultrasound probe and the actual eye. And usually two of these saline containers are enough to fill it up. Um, the ultrasound probe that you see in a moment has a moving head that goes back and forth here that creates little A scans that are then reconstructed uh, as a B scan, as you can see here. And this is what we're seeing now. Just what you're seeing is those, I'm gonna pause it for a moment right here. This is just the iris. We're seeing the arch of the cornea over the surface somewhat, you can see there, but most more so the iris itself. This is the actual body of the lens implant, the IOL, and the haptic in this case is just coming and making contact with the back of the iris. Now you can also see something else the patient pointed out that the vision wasn't quite as good as in the other eye. That lens has a little bit of a tilt, which can make the vision less perfect. And if we let this play out a little bit, you can kind of see this in real time, what that UBM looks like. There's the tilt to the lens, and on the right side of the screen is where we're actually seeing that contact causing that iris transillumination defect. And there it is up close, just a little slower motion to see the haptics of the lens rubbing on the back of the iris. And the haptics here are the same thickness as the lens. So this is a one-piece lens, meaning the optic and the haptics are made of the same material. This material is a bit thicker, and the 
haptics themselves have sharp edges and the material, the hydrophobic acrylic is also a little tacky so it actually adheres or kind of rubs against the iris. In addition, yes, we did this UBM dilated because that's how the patient was. If this was an undilated UBM, you probably would see more interaction with the iris because just like in the retro illumination picture on the undilated patient, you would see the interaction between the haptic and the iris a little bit more easily because the iris would obviously cover a larger aspect of the eye well. And now you mentioned one piece, com contrasting with a three piece, for example, of an IOL, one piece, are you more concerned about this? And the second follow-up question is, now the plan is for an IOL exchange, what would be the new lens that would be better suited for this patient or the location for it, perhaps? So three piece, the haptics are very thin, almost the same as a suture, and they are round, so they're much less likely to cause problems in the sulcus. The, because the lens, the capsule bag is not open yet, I can actually hopefully just reposition that haptic into the capsule bag. If I had to do a exchange, for example, with an open bag, I would choose a three piece because it would cause less likely to cause issues for this particular patient.